Okay, Wayward Son, the uh, quest I've been putting off for a little while. It's about time we go and do that one. Greetings, my lady. You look like a woman who would appreciate the finest rubies from Antiva, raising her lovely neck. I bring only the best northern merchandise to the free marches. Actually, I'm more interested in your son. My lady, I'm a bachelor. I've never met a woman of sufficient beauty and charm to tie Vincento down. <laughs> That's the best you can do with a guard staring you in the face. Let us not ruin the day with such weighty thoughts. Perhaps I could show you my silks. Perhaps you could stop jerking me around and tell me where your son is. The boy is a mage of Elvenbrod. Do you wonder I fear for him? See where that got us. The gallows courtyard. There he is. I know you from somewhere. You're Ferelden, right? Ever spend time at the Pearl? That's it. You used to really like that girl with the griffin tattoos, right? What was her name? The Lay Warden? That's right. I think you were there the night I... Oh! Were you the runaway mage who could do that electricity thing? That was nice. Please stop talking. Now... <laughs> Are you the Templar who is pursuing the boy Fainrail? I did not realize his name was known so widely. Are you a friend of his? Have you met him? What is he like? From his mother's description, he sounds much like any youngster we bring to the circle. Frightened of his gift, resentful at losing his freedom, convinced he is the one exception to our laws. Hardly someone you would wish the power to murder people with his mind. No young boy should have to face down demons alone. It is surprising what sympathies mages evoke. I always expect people to be more wary of their powers than touched by their struggles. If we do not find Fainriel soon, it will not matter. Either he will be taken by the demons, or by less mystical predators. And I've said more than enough on the topic. This is a Templar matter, and we will be handling it. Aveline, don't you think this matter concerns the whole city? It does, and you Templars are spread thin to begin with. True. Sadly, there are more mages fleeing than we can easily keep up with. Then let the city guard do what we're good at. I can track the boy. There is a Templar, former Templar, by the name of Samson. He left the Order due to philosophical differences. He has been known to help mages flee Kirkwall. If Fainriel went to him, Samson wouldn't tell me. He stays out of sight by day, but I've seen him at night, near the entrance to Darktown. Okay, the whole... The whole, um... thing about mages in this world is that everyone is afraid of them. Or at least almost everybody's afraid of them. And the... Dark Town, Dark Town, Dark Town, Dark Town. Oh, okay. It, I got I'm still, still doing this in High Town. Just to the entrance of Dark Town. I'm not sure where that is. Uh, I thought he said Dark Town. He said Low Town. Okay.
Someone's always trying to take over at night. But someone else will always pay for their removal. Very nice. Are you answering? Ah! Sweet mother of Parth. You can't just run up on someone like that. Are you? The human that Benril told me about? The one looking for work? Did you think I was going to attack you? Oh, no, no. Uh, all right. Hope not, anyhow. My apologies, human. I haven't been on the surface very long. I keep thinking I'll fall up into that sky any minute. Dwarves are funny. But I digress. I need some help. Rather badly, in fact. Some product of mine has been misplaced. The men who were supposed to deliver it decided not to. If you retrieve my property, I could reward you handsomely. Just what did these men steal? <laughs> did I say steal? I, I don't know if I would go that far. They seemed like perfectly reasonable smugglers. They smiled and everything. The goods are valuable, however, and illegal. And my client wants them very, very badly. <laughs> you know how these Templars can be. You're smuggling Lyrium to the Templars? Brave man. By the Paragons? Not so loudly? My word. I'm not cut out for this. I should have taken that job sweeping staples like Mother insisted. Make it worth my time and I'll help you. Oh, I will. Or I'll try to. The gentlemen conduct their business at night in a little hovel within the alienage. If you have to kill them, then I guess it can't be avoided. But I'm sure they'll be reasonable. Okay, that was the wrong guy to talk to. But um, I'll, I'll get back to that later. Uh, I guess this is the one that we're supposed to be going to. It's the bigger arrow. What do you know? I was told my old friend Thrask was advising you folks to seek me out. You're looking for the boy, right? Feign something. I'll tell you now, there's not much I can do for you. I'm looking for a retired Templar named Samson. Uh, retired? Sounds better than a burned out husk of a Templar begging coins in the choke dab. They don't do anything to keep you, you know. You join the order, you're free to walk away. But they're the only ones who've got the dust. The dust? Lyrium, an ore the dwarves mine. Magic in its raw form. You need to drink the stuff to face down the magickers. Problem is, if you ever try to stop, oh, just about kills you. Is it true you give aid to apostates fleeing the Templars? The mages are help. They're no more than children, newly discovered their magic and terrified. Barely left their mother's skirts, and now we're saying they got to be locked away for their own good. That demons are hunting them. Do you wonder they run? Did you meet the boy? Afraid so. Blighter was dead broke though, not a silver on him. I helped one mageling for free, and I'll never get paid again. I pity any mage who is forced to rely on you for protection. I pointed him to a ship captain I know, Rayner. Sometimes he'll take on runaways. Took another apostate last week, girl I sent him. Might have gone wrong though. I heard rumors he took the both of them captive instead. Please tell me it's not too late to save him. Rumor has it Rayner had the pair of them locked inside a Keys warehouse, somewhere close to Dockside. You want to go looking? You might find the lad before he gets ransomed to the Templars. Or worse. Oh, where did he say we had to go? <laughs> Alright, not everybody is so terrified of the mages that they feel they always need to be locked up. But it is clearly a strong enough thought among the population that mages are just intrinsically dangerous 
Now you do get some people like this fellow here that go and put some effort at least into protecting the mages, saying, like, hey, they, no wonder they're all afraid, no These wonder they run away, all that. Streets. I don't see a problem in giving them the fight they want. But it is clearly an exception to the rule, not the rule itself. So it begins and ends. Oh, And there are more of them. And Hawks down. Well, that went as planned, I guess. Bugger off. Now we fight. <laughs> Oh, no one up here. Chumps. All set. Hmm. Why were we attacked here? I mean, aside from the obvious. Not going to happen. Get a hold of her. Please. Help me, anyone. Get the hands! I heard they can't do no spells without hands. You know nothing of magic. Well, there was a mage that turned into an abomination. And now it's as uh, disgusting as it may seem that they lock mages up. This is the exact thing that they fear, and it does in fact happen. Mages, whether they want to be or not, are in fact dangerous. It's perhaps one of the best examples of moral ambiguity I've seen in any video game story. You have what... At what for obvious reasons seems like a rather disgusting concept that you have these people that through no fault of their own are sort of just locked up and held out of society and all that that poor girl who do you suppose she was we should see if there's anything here to identify her 
There we go. It seem it, it does seem terrible that they do this to people. They lock them up for obviously they never. Most of them, at least, uh, wouldn't be the kind of bloodthirsty monsters that people would assume they are. But the fact is, whether they want to or not, they are basically like ticking time bombs, just waiting for waiting for the moment that a demon can go and sort of take over their body and turn into these abominations, and these abominations are dangerous. So it's, you know, it's, it's sort of really messed up that these people have to go through this, but it's also like, well, there's a, there's a reason why. It's not just some weird discrimination. Uh, have we done everything we needed to do here? Okay, we need to go to Dark Town. We actually need to go to Dark Town this time, not just... <laughs> I think we have to go to Dark Town. This is an easier way to get there. What a dump. Sometimes I think you have the right idea. Handcuffs, whipped cream, always be on top. I never used to give two bits what anyone thought of me. Justice once asked me why I didn't do more for other mages. I told him it was too much work. But I couldn't go back after that. Couldn't stop thinking about it. Sometimes I miss being that selfish. <laughs> These people must just be witnessing murders all the time that they don't even flinch at the sight of it. But whatever. Rule of thumb. If the criminal runs to the sewers, he's gone. Why, look here, boys. Volunteers. Clap them in irons and let's see what the Tevinters will pay for them. I'd make a terrible slave. I talk too much. And I do that. Nobody threatens me on my ground. Shut this bitch up. I knew this would happen. Run If 
we kill them, we get their stuff. <laughs> Ah, shit. Run away. Well, I'm seeing a reoccurring theme here. Okay, I got him this time. Okay, we need to go, what was that called? The, uh, the Wounded Coast or something? We're gonna have to leave the city for that, though. Hopefully we can catch this, well, I mean, it's just a video game, so time doesn't really matter, but... Hopefully they can get there and rescue this little bastard before, uh... Before all hell goes to hell, you know? Oh, haven't we been here before? So, you married a Templar, huh? What of it? Are they all as dirty as they seem? What? Did he ever ask you to play the naughty mage and the hapless recruit? Maybe the secret desire demon and the upstanding knight? That's disgusting. I hear it's quite popular. <laughs> Chumps. <sighs> okay, it's just a point in the game where we're going to start noticing that a lot of the maps that we're visiting, we have been there before. In fact, it's maybe the third or fourth time or so that we've been to this area. And we're going to see it more and more and more. And it's going to become kind of obvious. And it's going to become more than obvious. Hey, it's a corpse here. It's going to become so obvious that it became a common source of complaint when it came to, it came to this game. That so many things were just reused over and over and over and over again. And people took issue with that. For pretty good reason, I think.
Oh, look. A mine. At least it's one that I don't think we've visited before. Nothing over there. My bad, we've been here before. One of the tricks that they try to do to make it feel like you're moving into a different area is to start you at a different part of the dungeon and then not have you traverse the entire thing. For example, this area in a dungeon we've entered previously, because we've entered this place previously, was the end of the dungeon. Now in this case, we are visiting here in the beginning of our run through the dungeon. And we're probably not going to be running to the part that we started at before. And it's some little trick that they did to try and make it feel like you're moving into a different area, and not just running through the same phases over and over again. Not as effective as they probably hoped it would be. And it seems pretty obvious. Anyway, we're going to keep moving. Just leave corpses sitting around. Take one more step and the boy dies. This is as close as I get. Now we fight! <laughs> Awesome. One left. Gotta lower his shield though, and then we can take him out. You would have let him kill me. 
He had a sword at my throat, and you just... I mean, thank you, but... What if you were wrong? I'm never wrong. Huh. That must be convenient. Who are you? Are you working for the Templars? Your mother sent me. Huh. Hardly a difference. I can't believe her. My whole life it was all, I'll love you and protect you. Then I have some bad dreams and it's off to the Templars. I'm here to help you, Fainrail. Why? You don't even know me. I've spent my whole life protecting my sister from exactly what you fear. Would... Is there any chance you'd help me reach the Dalish? That's where I was trying to go. See if they'd take me in. I'm as much Dalish as human. You don't whittle down those ears. They're apt to shoot you on sight. I'd rather be killed by the Dalish than turned tranquil by Templars. Look, I know it's different in other kingdoms, but here... No one helps circle mages. Anything the Templars don't like, you get the brand. The Dalish... They've had magic forever. They could teach me. I won't be a danger, I swear. Keeper trains him, keeps him safe from demons. No one gets locked up. Sounds like a winning plan. They probably could teach him. Whether they would is another matter entirely. Uh, at least if you go nuts out with the elves, you won't be killing any of us. Thank you. I did not. In my wildest dreams, I could not have foreseen this. Thank the creators, you were the one my mother hired to find me. I will forever be in your debt, friend. So, who's going to tell Mother Dearest? She must be just dying to hear what happened. Actually got Aveline rivalry with that. Not sure how, but whatever. Okay, he's going to go and try to live with the Dalish. Now, unlike the human populations, the Dalish do not have any sort of fear of mages. In fact, mages are such an integral part of the society, it's almost an expected thing that a um, an elf will become a mage and do men all find that. You intimidating? What about Wesley? Did he? Isabella. What? Too soon? Too soon, too personal, too... everything coming from you. Oh, sore spot. If you don't shut up, I'll give you a sore spot. Now, since the... he thinks that maybe the Dalish should be more accepting of him as a mage, as a result of uh, uh, their different culture, now one thing he's not really taking into consideration is the fact that the Dalish elves are rather xenophobic and probably don't accept too many people outside of their own group. Not even elves. City elves aren't really accepted. At least it doesn't seem that way. One thing that... Oh, hold on. Where, where is... Here we go. Now, Fenrail is a, um, a half-elf, but... That may not get him as far as he thinks it will, because in this world, elves hey, that bring things about you, Anders, not what I expected. From a mage, you mean? I didn't say that. How else would you judge me? What else am I a shining example of? I don't know. Other Ferelden's lurking in Darktown, mage or not. You have a fair point. The, um, when a human and an elf mate and they produce a child, that child is always pure blood human. They may be the child of an elf, but that doesn't show up going, in their genetics. Now, it's also a very big reason why uh, elves tend to frown upon the idea of interbreeding or, uh, or anything with humans, because it's basically going to abolish their bloodline if it continues on for too long. Your son decided he'd rather be an elf than a Templar prisoner. 
He joined the Dalish. What? But he is human. They did not even wish me to raise him among them. But they do value magic more than the men of Kirkwall. Perhaps he can have both safety and freedom. As I said, I have little money. But this is a Dalish ring that has been in my family for generations. Please accept it with my thanks. Ruined silverite ring. I am so hawking this. First chance I get, which I'll do at the uh, after I end the episode. 